everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This week's hobby based card is this one here. So at the moment, all you can see is this little box. And then inside we have this card and it's beautiful. I really enjoyed making this one. So it's kind of got this curved part here, which is just tucked in. So this little kind of cluster of dried paper, little roses there, is just a, a nice little tuck spot for that to sit in like so. Now the reason I've made this box kind of um, envelope gift box I mean you can use it for obviously many things as well is for that reason but if you're making this and maybe you don't have as much dimension on there you could have it you know flatten this and pop it in a normal envelope with maybe a little bit of bulk um, it's entirely up to you depending on how you make it but it's gorgeous so I've used here and I'll show you in a moment this is the Gemini filigree lace corner die and it creates this absolutely stunning it's just so detailed it's beautiful and then I've used the original V&A papers there um, which you've probably seen a while back in other tutorials but I've still got some and um, it just worked really nice so this is a thank you one and then I'm going to be doing another one with you and then on the back you could write your message here or you could have your message inside here if you just want to have a white piece of you know cardstock you could go over that and conceal the red if you wanted to. But I'm gonna show you all the steps anyway. It's a beautiful card. Now, the box, is, it's got a bit of room there because I'm actually gonna be putting some tissue paper around this as well. So I want, when I give it to that person, they'll be able to open up the tissue and then kind of get it. This would also be beautiful as a wedding card or a special, you know, um, anniversary card. So simply changing that, you know, sentiment there and you've, you've got, yeah, endless possibilities. So, and I've just used a standard, that's just the whole six by six piece of paper from the pack there on top, which is the same. So I'm just gonna pop that one to one side and let's bring in everything here. Okay, so you are going to need these flowers here. You can get these many, many companies sell these and I'll share all the links as always in my blog post. I've got some of my stones. All these bits, I've already prepared many parts because obviously you don't need to see all of that. So this one that I'm going to be doing now is Sorry You're Sick, Get Better Quick. Okay, so different again. Now this is the beautiful die. Pop that there. It's stunning and it's really big. Now it's got two parts, so you can just have that die cut design in your card and it won't come out. You just take out all the detail and it'll leave that whole shape. If you then add that bit, that piece to it which I'm going to be doing it will cut that whole part away like so okay so that's what I've used there to cut that away so again I will show you all that I'm going to leave that one out because I'll probably revert to it a few times throughout the tutorial so we'll just stand that up over there so that's what we're going to be using and like I said it's the Gemini um, by Crafters Companion and it's the filigree lace one there and you can just see lots of inspiration and ideas for this one but it shows you the two there so that's it leaving the actual die cut image in the cardstock and that's it cutting it completely away there okay all of this is obviously available at hobby base and again all those links will be shared below and you'll probably see the product running along the bottom of this video as well so i'm using a six by six card blank card base which is here that's all for the box let's get that out of the way and then i'm not confusing myself so six by six card base, if you don't have this, you want a piece um, of 12 by six, and then along the 12 inch side, you just want to score it six inches, okay? That will give you your card base. And then I've got all these bits here ready. So this bit here is gonna mat inside the card because it's one of those cards where you actually see the inside, okay? It's more of a decorative, like just, piece of artwork as such because you just have it like that that person takes it out so I think for me I'm going to be putting my message on the back and what I'll probably do is cut down a smaller piece of red again and then a smaller piece of white and then I'll be able to write my message but that is I want them to just open it up and that's how it is straight away ready to go so for the piece inside which is going to go here this is five and seven eighths of an inch squared it's going to go like so there we go and then this is the decorative piece to go on top so this is your main pattern that they're going to see as soon as they open the card and this here is five and five and five eighths squared okay so again I've just dropped down by a quarter of an inch there and you can see when that's on top you get that really nice frame so those two bits are really really simple what you need to do then is have another piece of cardstock in whatever colors you're using and this is what we're going to have behind this so when we cut this out this is cut out of the card so you can see there there is the card just the same as this here 
and then when I cut that die cut image you can obviously see right through it and I wanted to kind of back it so I've used some red so you just want to make sure you've got a cardstock that is going to be the width of your six and the height by six so mine's a bit higher but that doesn't matter okay and then you just want something that you can use to create like a little tuck spot for this piece here and then decoration and your sentiment and everything else okay so first of all don't need the scoreboard I just have that to keep everything on let's get this die cut so pop that to one side now I didn't trim the um, card down to fit the die I've actually kept it in its six by six form and if you can see here I've just cut down the card there and if that was to lie flat you would see there it wouldn't quite meet to the end I just preferred that I thought that looks quite nice and again it just shows off this lovely detail and everything I just really like the final result so yeah you don't need to alter the card around the die for this one so what you want to do is sit it towards the bottom left and you do want to hug it as close to the edge as possible leaving just a tiny 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 bit of the white card stock showing because if you look underneath you can actually see there's already a border around the die so if I was to bring it out like that you're actually you can see where the image starts you're going to have an even bigger white space so really kind of bring it right down as far as you can to the bottom left hand side there okay and then I'm going to bring in this one here and with some of just a low tack washi if you've got a really sticky washi tape just pop it on your jumper or your jeans a few times just to remove some of the initial stickiness and then it won't ruin any of your paper but you can see that I've got a very very minimal white space and you want that piece to go right in really tight it sits perfectly next to that die and then I'm just going to pop I'm just going to remove some of the lint actually before because I don't want this any of it coming away I don't want it taking any of that white away and then obviously open up the card and you're just going to run through this first half through your die cut machine so I'm just going to bring mine over here and then pop that one down there now by the at the end this whole piece here is going to be removed so don't worry if it may get marked or anything it, you know you're not going to see it usually I would lay a white piece of copy paper down but I'm not going to now with my plate I just want my plate to go to the end of the die and make sure your plate underneath covers that as well and that way you don't run the risk of making any marks on the other side of your cardstock so now I'm just going to run that one through you might need to do it a couple of times or add another shim it depends on the pressure everybody knows their own die machine this one is really going through so it should cut perfectly okay and then just very carefully start lifting it up and that washi tape just lifts off nicely as well like I said that is going to be removed eventually this other half anyway so I'm not too worried but just very careful you can see it takes most of it out but I can see now that has all been completely die cut and see what I mean when I was saying about the frame it's already got it given itself a frame there can you see and all the way along the bottom so if you brought it out in even further that would have become a really you know large space so what I'm going to do now before I start picking all those bits out is I'm just going to cut really neatly and just snip up and that gives me that edge that's going to be tucked in you're not going to see that and then from here oh, goes my phone you can cut down like so and there you can see now if I fold this back over you may need to burnish it again I'll just grab my bone folder there and just kind of rework that like so once we pop all those pieces out look how nicely how nice that looks okay so just for a bit of speed if you don't have one of these they're brilliant and these just remove all the little bits much much quicker than sitting there and now they've gone everywhere it's like glitter and um, yeah it is like glitter actually all the pieces everywhere but it just um saves you sitting there with your pokey tool you might get the odd little stubborn ones but you can see how quickly they all pop through and there you go just get that last one out look how gorgeous that detail is it is beautiful love 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 it now that is nice on its own you know and you can distress it color it with your inks but once I bring in this card stock just look how much that transforms that card it's just it is it's stunning so what you want to do with this piece here is we need let me just I'm just going to clear all this away because it does look like someone's just got married and just thrown confetti everywhere 
Okay, so what you want to do here is get your card stock for whatever colour you're going to have underneath. Line it up with the bottom of your card below. Okay, so it's nice and straight. Now you don't want it to be right to the edge, so bring it up a little bit. Because you can see that we've got a border, so we've got enough room. As long as there's room to be able to stick it, like so. Okay, I'm going to grab this piece, and I've got some more washi tape. And just pretend this is the die, you're going to lie that piece down, like so, making sure it is right up to it. You may have to flatten it a little bit there, but just get it in place, and then again, kind of stick it down, but lift that bit up, and just make sure that's in place. And then I'm going to just run that through my machine again. Okay, let's pop that back. Right. So if I remove this very carefully, put a washi tape on that side. And then again, I'm just going to trim up that piece there, as neat as possible. And now this piece should fit perfectly behind that piece, which it will do once we stick it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very, very thin layer, because now when you pop that right in, if you pop it right up to that score line, when it folds over, it's going to create a bit of bulk. So I'm just going to take a very, very small amount off of that side. So I'm just going to come in and just literally a sliver. There you go. You see there. All right. And now it will still be enough to stick against it. But look, there's no bulk. Okay, so it covers it. I'm going to stick it from this side. There won't be any bulk. You want it to come down just below. So you've got a bit of a white there. So actually I'm going to take a little bit off that bottom side as well. So you just want to just, it's one of those things you, you know, everybody's going to be slightly different. So you just want to kind of, you know, just chop little bits away until you get it. So there we go. Now you can see it covers the back perfectly and I've got a little bit of a white frame all the way around, which is what you want. You don't want any of the red coming out over the side, but at the same time, you obviously want it to cover all of that there. Okay, so now to stick this down, I like to get my glue and pop it all over my hand. I've done this in many, many tutorials. And the thing I like about this as well, obviously don't get it too close to your hair, but once it dries, you get to peel it all off. So I'm just gonna splodge that all around. You could obviously put double-sided sticky tape on these and run that through your dye machine. You know, with that on the back, you can go with the precision glues and just go along all the kind of main areas. But what I'm gonna do is now, just very carefully, wave that over my hand and it just gives you a nice thin layer of glue like so and then with this piece you can come in and make sure I've got a bit of wiggle room as well until I'm happy and this dries completely clear and it's not tacky either so even if I've gone over a little bit on the side there, it doesn't matter. Like so. So again, as long as it's all, see it's all contained within that white area. So now when I flip it over, isn't that gorgeous? So, so pretty and it's got a really nice, you know, finish to it. So, you know, that person opens it, they can see there, you know, a lot of work has gone into that. Again, don't worry if any glue does kind of come through here. As long as you're using a non-tacky clear drying, it will be fine. If anything, it just gives it a little bit of shine, which isn't a bad thing. So I'm going to let that dry on my hand. So you'll watch that dry through the rest of the tutorial. So now it's really easy. That's the hardest bit, but it's, it's not hard in, you know, doing it all. As long as you've got all your tools ready, um, you know, the dye does all the work. But now I've already put some double-sided tape on the back. Okay, then I'm going to stick this one down. You should have a nice even border, like so. And then I've already again put my double sided tape on my layered piece here. So I'm just going to get that taken off. And again, just sit that neatly over the top. Again, just focusing on getting your sides all equal. And already now, look how lovely that looks. And what you want to start doing is just start to curve this piece especially I'd say if you've got the wet glue there because as that kind of dries it will you know stay in that shape but you can see now just by lifting that up and we're going to create this tuck spot down here 
So I've lifted mine and it's about, what did I measure that at? Because that's how I created my box. My arch is one and, it's about one and one eighth, one and, you know, a quarter. So you don't really want to go any higher than that. And you can see it, that's all it needs to, oh, she says to stand up. There we go. Okay. So what I've done is I just die cut this small little circle. It, you know, it's entirely up to you really what kind of size, but what I'm going to do is with a, so with this piece of foam adhesive, I'm just going to pop it onto the back side here and then bring this up, arch it. I mean, I've brought it in, might be easier if I just say how far in. Keep putting one ruler down and then picking up another one. So again, yeah, one and one and one eighth of an inch. So it's coming in the same. So I'm going to just eyeball mine because I know. But if you want to bring that kind of arch up so it's coming in by about one and one eighth of an inch, pop this stopper down so that that kind of stays in that position. So if you want it to permanently stay there, because if you're just going to have it like I am in that gift box, then you can actually almost stick it down underneath the foam. But I'm still going to have it so it's like a little tuck spot as you can see there, so I can just take that out and it just pops in there. Okay, and just check every time you pop it in that it stands up like so. All right, so I'm happy with where that is. I'm not worried that you see some of it because now with these bits, I'm gonna stick three very tightly together like so, you can see there. And then also I'm gonna have one of these, which I just got from my stash, take the edge off and that's going to stick down like so. Okay, so with my hot glue, I'm just going to pop a little bead, making sure they all still stick to that little disc. It was, I think, a one inch. And just try not to, you know, make sure they, they go down and overhang from the bottom, because obviously the card won't stand up. Like I said, I want them really, really snug and close together. And then that piece there. I will use just a normal wet glue and just kind of nestle that underneath like so. so just bring that up so you can see there how nice that looks. Okay, next you just need to finish off with your sentiment. So I've already popped some foam adhesive onto this. Just raid your stash, obviously see what stamps you've got. And I've just stamped it on white and then I have mounted it on the same red that I've used in the card there. Okay, and just found a nice red ink. And then I'm gonna bring it in by about three eighths of an inch, making sure it's nice and straight. There we go. And then again, I'm gonna have another one stuck there with some more green leaves like so. I think that looks really pretty. And then these ones here, I just kind of ripped off like so. And then they will go underneath the bottom here. Again, you can do it entirely how you like, but that's how I'm doing this. And then I've got a couple of embellishments as well. So I'm gonna get all that stuck down. Okay, so there is a gorgeous, gorgeous card. So pop that to one side. And now we want to make our box. So you are going to need, grab my scoreboard. So for the base, you need a piece that is eight and three quarters squared. So eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. And for your lid, seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And you want to just score every on every side at three quarters of an inch. So three quarters, rotate, three quarters, rotate three quarters and she's just gone off there <laughs> so my finger was in the way but I'll cover that with that paper and again three quarters there we go and then this is just a piece of six by six as I mentioned before and that's just going to go on top of course you can decorate even more you know I could add more of these on but as I plan to probably post it I just think I'm going to keep the box probably quite basic but that doesn't mean obviously you have to so first of all with your base piece of card so your largest piece that you've got you actually want to trim a little bit off of this. So this is when this particular trimmer comes in very handy or any very good guillotine. Guillotines are really good for taking slithers off or if you've got a brand new blade on your trimmer, that works brilliant as well. But you just want to take, literally, it's like, you know, one sixteenth 
like a few millimetres, look, tiny, tiny, tiny. You want to do that on two sides, so there's one side and then another. And this will just give us a really nice closure when we go to put our lid on, by just taking that little bit off, okay? So now we've done that, you want to score at one and a quarter on all four sides. So one and a quarter, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, and one and a quarter. Okay, so that's our base already. Burnish all of my score lines. Okay, again, choose a side, and this time you're gonna cut right down. Again, to the first score line. And then rotate. Okay, so we've just got those four squares and then you just want to again very neatly take the little wedges off and again just lay that down there that's how it should look okay next we need to stick them together so you'll stick the base and the lid together exactly the same way so with those tabs facing up just add some glue I'm going a bit too crazy there just take some of that off and just fold it in and bring round one of those sides and it should match up perfectly like so. Go along to the next one. Making sure you get a nice join on that where that score line is because obviously that's what you see on the side of your box. Like so. And do the same on the other side. Like so. So there you can see we've got a simple, oh, that was not stuck, there we go, a simple box and just kind of start to work the score lines in there just so it wants to stay in that position. There you go, all right, easy peasy. I want to burnish all of the score lines. Okay, and then starting on any sides and tidy up to you, you want to cut down, you'll have these little squares in each corner you're going to cut down two like so, then flip the whole thing round so the opposite side's facing you, and again very neatly cut up both of them just to that first score line, and then you just want to take little wedges off of each side so you're creating that tab. So again, like so, and then rotate it, and just lay that down. That is what you should have. So again, on each of those little tabs, pop a little bit of glue, like so, bring it down and bring that side down. Okay, and just do that again on all four sides. Okay, and then grab your base and it should be a really nice snug fit. Like so, you see how nice that looks. And then you just need to decorate it. So I've got that piece there that's gonna go right on the top. Like so, how nice does that look? And then I'm just gonna bring in this one here. And I've just added a couple of the little embellishments there on top as well. And then that just sits perfectly. Like I said, I'm going to put some tissue paper. So I'm going to get some blue tissue paper for this one. And it does. It's got a really nice, you know when you've got a good closure, I always say you can feel, feel the air coming out the sides. So that's that one. And then this is my blue. So you can see the two different colours there. My blue one with that one, like so. I think they are gorgeous. What really special beautiful card so that is using that stunning die which again will all be linked below and also in my blog post so I love this style and we'll certainly be making more of these so there you have it if you've enjoyed today's tutorial please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye